okay? Okay. Well, this is naturally a very exciting moment for Peter Burton and for me. Yeah. <coughs> this is magic, I can assure you, that everybody connected with the whole trust feel exactly the same about it. And I, all I can say is that we shall certainly do our best. And I know we shall get the same support in the future that we've had in the past. And there's quite a lot of development work to do on it. But we have high hopes, as Lord Hire said a few moments ago, that this car will uphold British prestige. And so do an enormous amount of general good for the country. Thank you. Tenacity is definitely something that is key to BRM. Driving a BRM on the 29th of December, 1962, Graham Hill became world champion by winning the South African Grand Prix. What springs to mind when people mention BRM to me is racing for Britain. It's that history, it's one of those historical and still very relevant motorsport names. Today, what to BRM? But the sound and fury of the first BRM were to signify the start of an unsettling sequence of ups and downs. Can you uh, please introduce yourself and your job role at BRM? I'm Nick Owen. I'm one of the four directors of BRM Limited. So BRM to me has always been a family endeavour and that's a family endeavour with the Owen family and Ruby Owen, mm. but it's also a family endeavour with the people from Bourne who made this happen. And we like to think of ourselves as a, as a big, a, a BRM family. And the community of Bourne is for me a huge part of this vision going forward. BRM's story starts in Bourne, a town in Lincolnshire that looks like it's been preserved from the 1800s. But the very people in Bourne know very little about what made this small town of around 17,000 known to thousands of Formula One fans around the world in the 50s, 60s and 70s. Yet BRM's creator, Raymond Mays, is recognised with small memorials and the Weatherspoons. With the new rise of motorsport and Formula One in the modern age on a global scale, it's time to retell the story of BRM to preserve the knowledge of this historic team. Let's go back to the beginning. The first official BRM was unveiled at what is now Aria Folkingham on the 15th of December 1949 by its founder and born local Raymond Mays. The V16 was held as a world beater in all the national papers. Obviously it's a new motor car and there's quite a lot of development work to do on it. But we have high hopes, as Lord Hire said a few moments ago, that this car will uphold British prestige and so do an enormous amount of general good for the country. Raymond Mains was a hugely successful motor racing, motor racing driver in the pre-Second World War years. Raymond Mays was one of the most um, vivid and one of the most memorable characters in the British motor racing scene, bar none. He proved to be, for much of his life, something of a Marmite character. You either liked Ray or you didn't. He also had this vision, though, of putting Britain on the F1. He was very conscious pre-war that it was dominated by the Germans and the Italians. And he'd already begun to arti articulate this vision before the Second World War. But then obviously war happened and there were other focuses for, for everyone and the country. I got to know him in old age. He was just a charming old gentleman. Um, he really was very, very nice and he was very he was pleasantly indulgent towards younger enthusiasts and he cared about recruiting people to the motor racing way of life. So post-war, Mays once again 
wanted to articulate this vision and make it happen. There were various sort of people he approached in those immediate post-war years, and one of them was my grandfather, Alfred Owen. And Alfred Owen also shared that vision of this national endeavour, this national prestige of a British Formula One team. And I think Sir Alfred Owen had always seen the benefit of a project like this that went far beyond just F1. It was a showcase for British engineering. It was a showcase for British motorsport. And in, in all things considered, it was actually a showcase for Great Britain. But the sound and fury of the first BRM were to signify the start of an unsettling sequence of ups and downs. An early up was Reg Parnell's victory in the Goodwood Trophy in 1950. The event was run in appalling and dangerous conditions. Unable to use the fantastic acceleration to the full, Parnell still finished well out in front. What we need now is a little longer time to develop it and then we hope to show the continent what we really can do. A youthful Sterling Moss drove one of two BRMs in the International Ulster Trophy in 1952. Moss had a bit of trouble at the start. The BRM team certainly needed experience. They needed time, too, to iron out teething troubles which persisted into the car's middle age. So in many ways, it was an issue of almost overcomplicated things. B BRM always wanted to do things in a meticulous way. The best of this, the best of that. We wanted to make everything incredibly sort of proficient. But in that process, things were also incredibly complex. So the B16, an incredibly complex engine, I think of about 36,000 components. The complexity of that was, I think, part of its, its downfall at times, in that it actually made it too complex to, to make swift progress on in terms of resolving some of the things we needed to resolve. But by the end of um, 52, 53, the V16 was a most wonderful creation. In the mid-50s, a new four-cylinder design promised a revival of world-beating hopes. First, second and third at Silverstone in 57, first in the Dutch Grand Prix in 59. Success was within the BRM's grasp. We, we'd had some success in the, the late 50s. Um, Bonnier won our first Grand Prix in 1959. But things probably still weren't quite as as smooth or as slick as they could have been. And 60-61 were slightly disappointing seasons. And I suppose one of the catalysts was um, management changes with Tony Rudd being promoted to, to take charge of things. And also, you could say an ultimatum from Alfred Owen and Rubio in that if we didn't have two Grand Prix wins in the 62 season, funding from Rubio would cease. And I think, you know, we, we got those two Grand Prix wins, and I think we knew we were in with a chance, but little did we know until midway into the season that actually we had a chance with the, the World Championships. Not just a sport, it's a war. Formula One was really tough. Going into the final race of the 1962 season in South Africa, both championships were down to two British teams and two British drivers. BRM's Graham Hill and Lotus's Jim Clark, who were fierce but respected rivals. The final race of the championship could have been anyone's, with the points gap being incredibly close in the constructors' and drivers' point standings. BRM had the advantage, but could they keep it? Jim Clark has made the better get -away. Graham using perhaps a bit too much gun. It's Clark, Hill and Mags. The Lotus continues to pull away. The race is running to fall. Both the Lotus and the BRM are being driven meticulously. Still Jim leads. But Graham does not let up. Now Jim Clark pluming a great screen of blue smoke behind the Lotus. This is it. This is our chance. Clark brings the Lotus in, and Jim Clark's wonderful drive is over. Cyril Atkins beside himself with joy. 
BRM have done it at last. And Sir Alfred Owen, the chairman of the Owen organization, the group of companies who have sponsored and supported the BRM for so long, is here to celebrate with us. The lot. BRM, first ever all British Grand Prix car to win the title. And Graham Hill, world champion driver. But after coming so close to other titles in the 60s and early 70s, BRM couldn't replicate what they had done in 1962. Star driver Graham Hill would eventually leave for rivals Lotus in 1967, and the BRM way of being meticulous would unfortunately be their downfall. I, I think there's, there's two sides to it, really. From a, from a BRM side of things, it looks like they were almost trying to do too many things and Formula One was changing in the 1970s. Teams were becoming more professional, and that's not to say BRM weren't professional, but they were diversifying into lots of different areas. And you look at the different categories that um, you know, the Owen organization were working with, um, and so there were lots of different, different factors to that. You had teams coming in with much bigger budgets, you know, people like Ferrari, Brabham, having big, big budgets and being able to develop cars in a different way because all of a sudden you were using aerodynamics and needing things like wind tunnels and needing to develop those kind of technologies. And so it became, you know, there were, there were two sides to it really. There was BRM doing lots of different things, but also Formula One becoming very difficult. In 1974, 22 years after Raymond Mays unveiled the V16, BRM ceased to be a Rubio in back team. Today, what do BRM do? Today, our vision is very much about bringing BRM back to life in a number of different ways. Firstly, there's actually celebrating the, the wonderful creation that was BRM and, and the values in the day, that value of sheer hard work, that value of engineering, that, that value of being a team. And I talked to the old mechanics and it was all about the camaraderie and the fun they had. So it's bringing the realities of, of that story to, to life. And I think to, to cap it all, we've obviously built Chassis 4 with a view to racing Chassis 4. We've had it out on the track. It's been at Goodwood, it's been at Prescott, it's been at Shelsley, it's been at Blyton. <laughs> It's sort of being bedded in and people are already enjoying the wonderful sound, seeing the wonderful power and performance. It's also about engaging with a new group, group of people or a new audience about this history. And that's done partly by telling the story again, but partly about sort of engaging people through the work we're doing with the school's outreach and the STEM projects. And I started to have conversations with Nick at BRM really about, uh, and he was really interested in our education program here. And so what we started to do was really talk about, because um, I was able to do a lot of the research into what Bourne had done and, and people like Raymond Mays and, and all the kind of work that had been done in Bourne on, from the ERA originally and then BRM. And Nick was really quite keen to kind of have a bit of a, the reawakening they called it, but have some of that reawakening back in Bourne. 
So we worked on a programme where we went out to all of the schools in Bourne, so the, the primary and secondary schools in, in the town of Bourne, and we delivered some of our workshops that we do here as an outreach programme in Bourne. And, and myself and Charlie went out to the schools and we took some of that kit, uh, the, the Formula One tyres, the race suits, the fuel tanks, all that kind of stuff, and we delivered sessions in the school. And what was really interesting, one of the, I did uh, one of my sessions with the sixth form, and I said, you know, have you heard of BRM, blank faces? Do you know about Bourne's Formula One team history? Uh, you know, and, and your town had a Formula blank faces. I said, how many of you have heard of Raymond Mays? And the entire room, these were six of us, put their hand up. Because the pub in the town is, there's a pub called the Raymond Mays, and of course they all heard it. They had no idea who he was. Over the course of the month, um, the Silverstone team were in to seven schools, over 600 pupils. We've got a special day coming up in Bourne in September 2023 um, and we're going to go out to the schools again and hopefully re, uh, reignite some of those things that we did a year ago. And it's about inspiring that next generation to to give Bourne it, it, its next sort of 60 years of motorsport history. BRM is a name that is revered and respected in motorsport not just for its engineering brilliance, but for its values in hard work and investing in the youth. Something that BRM is still actively pursuing today. The groundwork that was set over 60 years ago by Raymond Mays and Alfred Irwin was so much more than a Formula One team. BRM is not just the name of a team. They are the world beaters from Bourne.